honey amber. Oh, stuff's hard packed in here. What is it? Whoa. <laughs> standing near where the entrance once was to Prospect Place. It was a big brick structure built by the Hanson family. There would have been a wrought iron gate around here with a driveway that led up to the place. Out there in the field where there's a mound is where we figure the house once stood. It was built back in the 1870s. I got permission to excavate the grounds in search of remnants of previous life. We'll head out there and see how it goes. This spot where I've got the shovel in the ground here seems suspect. It's close to where I figure the house stood though, so it could just be buried rubble from that. We'll open it up though and see what's going on. A few pieces on the way out. Looks like the part to a flower planter. Salt glazed piece. And an iron stone piece. It's not a lot of room to work in here, so we'll pull them out and then Show them off. The flower planter is out. This is cool. I guess they had some gardens out here, so they could have had these out there. Had some of their flowers in the house, possibly. Also, this broken bottle, Buck and Rainer, Chicago. I'll have to do some research on this. Really good early style, though. And while I was looking for the rest of that, our first whole piece showed up here. Looks like a pharmacy bottle. No embossing. This has got to be 1870s or 80s. Wow. Huh. Might be English made. I think those are English markings. Cool. This site is all finished up. Bottomed out about four feet. It was just an uneven hole dug for trash. Here's some ironstone china. A couple different pieces including a pitcher. We managed to find all the pieces to this flower planter. That is amazing. Some bricks probably from the house, some salt glazed crock pieces, and the glassware at Buck and Rainer, drugstore bottle, pickled goods, jelly jar, another pickle bottle. Fill this one in and move on to the next. We're starting on this next one, small dimensions, though I don't believe we found the early privy here yet, so possibility some good potential the adventure continues this site actually has better age than it showed at first it's got some floral pattern handle off of a chamber pot. It's a broken tool top drugstore bottle, so we're pre-prohibition anyway. Hmm. Got something on the way out. I cleaned around the amber bottle. Looks like it could be some chemical container. Let's see. Cork top. Uh, early machine made. What's that say? Clorox. No. Sometimes these are Clorox bottles. 
Huh. Could be a bleach or chemical. It's a bunch of seeds in here. So this is definitely an outhouse for a prospect place. This wasn't much in it. Got another piece right here. Hmm. Here's a smaller amber bottle. Machine made. Probably another chemical bottle. There's what looks to be another one here. There's some metal in the way. Hmm. We're doing some cleaning or something here. Oh, here's something. Jelly jar. Tree root. Gets all the further it goes in that direction. I'm amazed at how small this pit is. There's not have been many people staying out here at that time. Another one of these amber bottles. This one wasn't very deep or remarkable in finds. So all these amber bottles, likely chemical bottles. This site dated back to about 1915, 1920. This next one's big. I'm thinking 8x4. I think eight by four. I kicked some marks in the ground. There to there probe marks the center of it. We'll get it opened up. We've got it opened up, giving us mixed signals on this side. We're hitting some earlier ironstone fragments, some earlier glass, and on that side we're getting some newer stuff, some plastic and junk. It could be the stuff that covered over on top of it over the years, although this stuff here does have some good age. This here is a fragment, which what I believe is a Fred Schnauber soda bottle from Yankton, Dakota Territory, possibly. Part of the Atlas Easy Seal jar. Cork top, getting better age. few pieces on the way out. This is seeming fairly modern though. Looks like screw top. Might have to pry that out. This flipped out uh, Vicks bottle. Jar. 1950s probably. Here's a medicine bottle. You can see the seeds. We're definitely in an outhouse site. <coughs> Illinois Glass Company. This one had some embossing on it. Let's see here. I'll have to loosen it. That looks like a liquor flask. Screw top. Machine made circa 1940. That's a little better age. Machine made cork top Raleigh's. Thought it was an early ball jar. It's like a 1930s, 40s preserved jar of some sort. Jake's down there carefully excavating the site. Got a few mason jar fragments. 
ball jars, probably, 1920s. There's the hall so far. I also got, looks to be a soda bottle. Ginger ale 7-Up, something along those lines. Some dinnerware fragments. Broken windows. I think this is a French's mustard container. Same age. Let's see. Another French's. Bottom. Machine made drugstore bottle. Alright, now this could be interesting. It's a big mason jar. Yeah, oh, it's broken. Typical. <clears throat> Broken, this is a half gallon, I think, Atlas Strong Shoulder Mason. I like mustard. Let's see, I might have a couple more. Just all kinds of stuff here. Getting ironstone fragments, dinnerware. A lot of it's, uh, some of it's slip glazed, so this is definitely a newer outhouse pit. Slip glazed croc. Could be a red wing. Dinner plate. Mm, could, could be an older one. Left over from years ago. I think they have a Lydia pink ends. Hmm, well, maybe not. Machine made, corked up. We have a Hemingway number no. 9 insulator. Classic. These were found on telephone poles all across the Midwest. It's an 1893 patent. This one was broken at some point, so they threw it down. Uh, Vix jar. And another drugstore bottle. Circa 1940. Got a couple more pieces on the way out. Let's see here. Let's see right here. It's actually. Ah, oh, the top's knocked off. It's a Art Deco Fender soda bottle from Yankton. Bender and Son. Bottom of a mason jar. Number 14, we found a 12 and a 14, no 13. We've yet to dig one. It's a food jar of some sort. Another screw top. This one's a, looks like a metal capped bottle. 1940. Keep scooping through here. Getting a little earlier, getting into the cork top era. It's another drugstore bottle. Some dinnerware. Some broken windows. Plenty of those in these pits. We have toiletry jar of some sort. Broken mason jar. Cork 
cork top. Medicine. Yeah, it looks like we have a beer bottle. That tool top. Hmm. That's all their pre prohibition. Hmm. Here's a shoe polish bottle. Machine made. Or about at bottom here. I dug a test hole. There's a few more pieces. Teacup. Little amber bottle, machine made. Looks like this pit bottomed out right around Prohibition era, the start of it. Um, got this metal piece here. Some leather. Let's see what's in it. Dirt. It's kind of cool though, a spittoon enamel work. Oh, here's something. Let's see. Another broken canning jar, number seven. And. <coughs> hmm. Cork top. Raleigh's. Now, this looks like it could. Okay, it's early machine man. Almost looks like it could have been tooled. Stone fragments. Okay, it's a aqua bottle with content stain. Oh, stuff's hard to pack in here. What is it? It's a tool top. Paper label. Whoa! That's the bottom to a really old hawk wine bottle. How did that get down here? That's 1880s. Some rocks grinding down here. Some metal pieces. Drugstore bottle, machine made. F. Baker and Company. Broken drinking glass. And broken food bottle. Broken mason jar. mason jar. They were doing a lot of canning out here. Some more broken windows. Oh, what do we got there? Hmm. Oh, it still has the label. Freeport, Illinois. W.T. Raleigh Company, <coughs> machine made. What's that label say? Maybe we can find a picture of one somewhere. Old 
rimmed pattern. Some floral decoration. something. A drugstore bottle full of groundwater. I think this pit's about finished up. It's about four feet deep. Five feet deep. That pit about finished up was five feet deep, four by four. Dated from about the start of Prohibition in 1920 up to about 1940. Here's the hall. Got one whiskey bottle. Maybe some kind of toilet trail. I have to do some research. Jelly jar, shoe polish, Vix in the middle there, the blue one. A little amber bottle, maybe some kind of chemical. Soda bottles uh, from Yankton, Bender Bottling Works. Drugstore bottles. Food jars. Canning jars, mostly Ball Mason. They were definitely doing some canning out here. Ironstone dinnerware fragments beer bottles, possibly oil bottles. We'll get it filled in.